everyone i warmly welcome you to small talk with the etsy collective uh, small talk is an initiative is an initiative to bring you closer to the change makers industry veterans and etsy sellers and give you the opportunity to listen to their thoughts ideas and some inspiration that we all need it brings my heart to a lot of joy that this right here is the 100th session of the etsy collective Thank you so much for being part of this amazing journey with us. We are so happy that you are here to share this milestone. Also to let you know that recently we completed 2 years of the Etsy collective and we have a small video to celebrate this milestone with all of you. Hope you enjoy this. <laughs> to two years of the etsy collective and many more milestones to come now i would like to uh, tell you about a little bit about our team so first up we have sunanda krishna she is the pr and marketing lead for etsy in india etsy collective has been a passion project for her and she never gets tired of speaking about it she has been a constant support for this project so i would like ask her to say a couple of words before we start the session thank you so much radhika and congratulations to you as well uh, it's actually a milestone that i have been waiting for for a long time now and when we started the etsy collective you know we could have never imagined that it would grow into this kind of a movement one that has been so enriching for everyone who has been a part it's been i think the richest experience for us to interact with the amazing seller community at at etsy and i would like to thank every seller who has participated in the collective thank you for being so supportive and for being such an inspiration for us to work on this like week after week uh, i think i also want to thank himanshu vardhan who's the managing director for etc in india he is our mentor first and boss later but he is the strongest supporter of the etc collective i don't think we would have been able to reach like 100 events in 2 years without his guidance and support so thank you so much himanshu and of course i have to mention my amazing team you've already met uh, radhika but uh, we have a small but very mighty team and who've made it into this passion project it's actually thanks to this amazing team that we've uh, had an event come rain or floods 48 degrees or freezing cold and uh, we've gone to so many new places we've learned so much from this experience So thank you team for giving us your Saturdays for the last 100 weeks. So proud of all of you. Cheers to us. Uh I'm really also excited to have Riaz and Elodi in this milestone session. Thank you so much to both of you for joining. I know that you have an amazing shop and an equally amazing story. So we are looking forward to listening to you. Thank you so much Radhika over to you. Thank you so much for saying such kind words. Of- I'm really excited for this session myself as well being part of this collective for a really long time. So thank you so much. Uh next up we have Preeti Jha so she's part of the seller success team and she and her team has helped a lot of Etsy sellers uh to know about the platform to optimize their shops and to open their Etsy shops first um in place. So she'll be there in the second half of the session answering a lot of Etsy related questions. So make sure you talk, type down all your questions that you need to ask her. then we have ishani mukherjee she is part of the community and the marketing team she will also be there in the qa part and she'll be taking a lot of questions from the audience and finally i am radhika agrawal i am part of the pr and marketing team and i'll be your host this evening and of course not to uh, forget the the major like the guest speakers for today who um, this whole session is about is riyaz and elodi 
they have an Etsy shop by the name Adelie Lal Mitti. Through Adelie Lal Mitti, Riaz and Elodie have created a beautiful world of handmade ceramics for different types of their buyers and they sell all over the world. So we're really looking forward to listening to your thoughts and your journey on Etsy. Really happy that you're part of this session. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So <laughs> let me know a little bit about the event uh, flow. We will talk a little bit about what is Etsy, who we are and what we do. Then we will have a very interesting fireside conversation with our sellers where they will talk about their journey and give a lot of insights about how they make their products and how they photograph it. So stay tuned for them, that. Then uh, they will also show a presentation about picture perfect ceramics as the theme suggests. And then we finally have a Q&A with the audience where all of the questions that are there in the chat box will be taken up and we'll be answering all of them. So to start, Etsy is a global marketplace for handmade and handcrafted products. We provide creative entrepreneurs a platform to sell their products in more than 80 countries in the world. Currently, it's the only platform that caters to all the creative entrepreneurs. The platform connects to sellers and buyers looking for an alternative to find something with a human touch for the moments that deserve imagination. We connect to millions of buyers and sellers, and currently we have 2.8 million active sellers all over the world, selling more than 66 million pro products to over 46 million active buyers. In the time when automation is increasing so much, Etsy's mission is to keep the human connection in the heart of commerce. That's why we've built a community that lives and thrives because it is powered by people like yourself. A little about Etsy's green footprint. In 2019, Etsy became the first e-commerce company to offset 100% of its carbon emissions from shipping. For every item shipped in our marketplace, Etsy automatically invests in an environmental project to offset these emissions. Since 2019, we've offset over 173,000 metric tons of CO2, which is equivalent to 20,000 homes energy use for one whole year or 20, charging 22 billion smartphones. It's not just us as a company who feel responsible to account for our carbon footprint. 90% of buyers say that environmental sustainability is very important to them. So, which brings me to a very important part. There are three categories of goods which are sold on Etsy. First one being the handmade category. Anything that you design or make on your own comes under this category. And this is the biggest category of our sale on Etsy. Next category is the vintage category, which is very unique to Etsy. So anything that is 20 years old or older in its product age comes under this category. And finally, we have the craft supplies category where anything that is utilized to complete a product comes under this one. For instance, you're into making printed fabrics, gemstones, buttons, all of these are included in a product to finish it. Those are the uh, products which come under the craft supplies category. So here's a little uh, trivia about Etsy, uh, that Etsy is built to encourage in entrepreneurship. You might find it interesting to know that 95% of our sellers work out of their homes. 53% of, of total sellers sold their first goods on Etsy. 83% of our sellers are women and 90% of our sellers are businesses of one. There is a reason why entrepreneurs pick and choose Etsy because we believe entrepreneurship begins with you. That's why we think all the decisions in your shop should be made by you. Starting from the price of the product, the, the price that you want to charge for your product, the shipping policies, the return policies are all decided by you. And we have a lot of seller services which uh, and tools to help you start, manage, and scale your business. A little about our company. The company was founded back in 2005, and our headquarters is in Brooklyn, New York. We started our corporate office in Delhi in 2018, and since then, we've tried to engage with the creative community, and Etsy Collective as an event was a result of that. Our aim with the Etsy Collective is to build a community of artistic individuals who are curious about Etsy as a platform and want to explore it. In case you missed the a big announcement in the beginning, this is right here is the 100th session of the Etsy Collective. And these are all the places we have went for the offline sessions. And to give you a little taste of how an offline collective looks like, we have a short video to show all of you. Hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
हॉबी <laughs> not just about selling etc is really about building a community of creative people and what we've done in india is since last year is that we try through the etc collective to meet with different creative people in different parts of the country so so far we've done about 32 collectives almost all the bigger cities we've covered and now we aim to go to the smaller cities and interact with creative people it was great uh, quite informative it was worth it It's always good to be around HC people and the entire communities. People are very welcoming, and uh, this uh, workshop, everything was good. <laughs> Never fails to bring a smile on my face. Uh, so thank you so much. Uh, we now we start with the fireside conversation. We are very excited to talk to you, Riaz and Elodi. Thank you so much for being part of this session once again. Thank you. so before um anything any uh, technical question i would first want to know can you tell us a little bit about your background and or, and how did you start um atile lal mitti and what's the inspiration behind this really unique name okay. so uh, we both of us are uh, artists ceramic artists we work with clay and we each have our individual artistic practice and we actually met through clay because when we were studying ceramics at university in cardiff this is where we met so this is uh, our background so it's more arts than design really and uh, we wanted to work on something together so uh, we this is how we started at the lalmiti so um it's quite different from what we do as artists because it's a uh, production and it's for everyday use it's pottery really and um, the name atelier lalmiti so it's two words the word atelier is a french word that means studio or workshop so because i'm french obviously it made sense to have also a little bit of french in the name and lalmiti it translates both as a red clay in hindi and in persian it's precious clay so it's a, a good um, combination and a mirror of the culture mix of our setup. Wow. That that's really nice to know how it incredibly those words came together in such a beautiful name. Yeah. Um, uh, next up my question would be about how did you like what was the idea behind starting Lalmiti as a brand itself and what what really inspired you to make this up as a like take it up as a business. So it's been 3 uh, years when we started at the lal meeting before we were in delhi mm, i was teaching and uh, he was uh, practicing as a freelance artist but when our uh, baby came we decided to leave city and come to the mountain and then when we decided to have our production unit and this is how we started working on the uh, otali lal meeting tableware production okay as elodie mentioned before like before we were mostly working on our artwork so now we do both like we work on our artwork as well but uh, on the side we also do this production okay <laughs> so uh, my next question is about we see very interesting illustrations and motifs um, on your ceramic products so how do you come up with these kind of motifs and how do you come up with different collections Okay so these motifs what you see is uh, mostly inspired by where we live you will see when we start showing some photos of where we live that is got a lot of nature around us we are really in the nature so a lot of the patterns that uh, you will see on the ceramics are inspired by plants flowers trees elements of the natural world and also the inclusion of animals um 
they are very whimsical, the animals, but they are also a reflection of what can be found around, around here. Yeah. So, also, like sometimes you'll find some mongoose and cats, cats, like there are some leopards in this area, so it's kind of also a little bit of a hint to that animal. Yeah. And uh, owls, we see sometimes these kind of animals are also around us, yes. Oh, now it doesn't completely huh? make sense because you have all of these animals, uh, you know, illustrations on your uh, uh, on your ceramics. So I think now I get it that all of these animals are there <laughs> in your surroundings that you sort of create. Yeah, yeah. And if you see, like we our uh, cities also keep on changing with the weather, like when it's in monsoon or spring or winter. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, because none of our pieces you would see, like we repeat too much. So whenever, whatever is around, it just inspires us. Oh, that's, that's nice. Uh, so my ne next question is about how does social media play a part in driving um, sales to your Etsy shop? And uh, like, how do you uh, sort of keep everything in sync, the social media handles and your Etsy shop so that everything is updated? It's uh, uh, very important to, like, uh, to keep these two in sync, social media and uh, our Etsy shop. Because most of our traffic, if you, and we go and see, uh, goes to Etsy through our, uh, say, Instagram. So yeah. we try to keep uh, our Instagram very uh, fresh. And because we work in a small series, so we always have lots of content. So we keep on like uh, adding whatever is coming from the kiln when we are making new stuff. So it's always we have enough uh, content for say. And whenever we say, for example, update our Etsy shop, uh, so we always make a story or post or something. We always keep on informing that these pieces are on Etsy, go and visit and see. So, and to like, uh, it's, yeah, it's very important to keep these two fresh and update. Okay, so uh, before I start with any other Etsy related questions, I would like to know that what was the, like, why did you choose to sell online and through Etsy out of all the plethora of options out there and how has your um, Etsy experience been overall? Uh, yeah, we chose Etsy because we were familiar with Etsy from the past, from when uh, we were living in Europe. I, uh, yes, I, you know, it's very well established over there. And it's uh, also lots of people who are making really excellent work sell on Etsy. So it had a good reputation and we thought it's very valid for what we do. Yeah. So, and uh, excuse me, the second part of your question was it? Is, uh, why did you choose to sell on Etsy out of all the plethora of options? Yeah. How has your Etsy experience been overall? It's been really, uh, really seamless, I would say. It's uh, very easy to set up an Etsy shop. And uh, so the process of having the shop was, I would say, very step-by-step, -step easy. Sorry, there's a tractor. Sorry, there's some uh, <laughs> noise in the background. Uh, I'm going. There is a oh, what? A noise at the background. Some, okay, uh, no worries. No. <laughs> So as I was saying, like uh, we found the uh, Etsy, uh, the format is such like it's very easy to make your shop looks really good with not because uh, we are not having like too much of software knowledge or something. But Etsy make it uh, very easy and uh, make it like with a little effort your shop looks uh, really good. So that was the reason I would say. Yeah, I think um, I think that's like. One of the major reasons a lot of artists um, and, you know, creative entrepreneurs come on Etsy because of, I think, the user friendliness is something that uh, you're talking about here. So I think, yeah, I totally agree. Um, my next question is about um, talking about selling online. What are some of your tips and tricks about, you know, uh, product photography? Because I think everybody here would agree that you have, like, really beautiful Etsy shop with re really simple photography yet it's really eye-catching for a buyer and it's it's not diverting with a lot of props in the background but it's concentrated towards your product so I'm sure you have a lot of tips around that plus we would love to know uh, about the different techniques from which a ceramics product is made 
So can you tell us a little bit about that? We have uh, made a little uh, presentation. Oh, wow. So this is a quick one. So through, we'll take you through that and we'll tell, uh, I think, answer all this uh, question what you have just asked. So shall yeah. I? Yeah, sure. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to our studio. Um, this is uh, a photo of our house and studio. The colorful tin roof is the studio part. This slate roof is the house. Um, so we made this little presentation with lots of images and visuals to hopefully help everybody to understand how we make the products on the first half of the presentation. And then we'll also share some tips about uh, how we take the photos. And hopefully these tips will be very useful because we are very low tech. So um, it's very accessible to everyone in theory. So, yes. so we are in a small uh, village called Andreta. And in Andreta, there's a small uh, society called Woodland Society where all the artists live. So we are kind of away from the town or city. We are very like uh, secluded, and especially our house is the at yeah. the foothill of the forest uh, mountains. So we are very fortunate that we don't have much traffic or people around. But it's still this place. This uh, little village is quite uh, popular, and people keep on coming. Yeah. So. Here you see the what you saw just from the top view. This is like our studio. This is the space where we mostly work. We both of us. We have this open space. We like to because it's such a beautiful nature around. So we didn't want to make it cover. So it was very simple to construct this uh, uh, roof shed, uh, and then we have a small studio indoor as well. In winter, we need to work inside. And you see, as uh, like this is the very mm, typical view or photo of uh, a ceramic studio. So all this, what you're seeing, uh, are the portraits in different stages. Some are still to be dry. Some are first uh, already firing fire first. So it's uh, red in color. The white one, what you see, it's already glazed and waiting for uh, uh, decoration. So we are a very small team. It's the two of us and also one assistant. So we uh, handle everything from making the clay, like you can see on the left, this is a pro process of kneading the clay so that it becomes very even in consistency. And uh, until the packing and the shipping of the, of the products, we handle all the, everything really. So yes, it's good to mention this also. And as it's like, we are just surrounded by nature. So we try to use whatever is available in nature. So what you see for packing, we use uh, pine needles and it's a very good uh, packing material. And it's, and and it's eco-friendly. Yeah. And when people receive this, there is kind of, they feel like they receive a little bit of uh, Himachal in the box. <laughs> so it's nice to send this as a packing. And here you see the uh, uh, process of making. On the left uh, slide, uh, I'm throwing a small uh, teapot. So this is how once you prepare clay, you work on the wheel and uh, make the pot. And on the right, what you see, once pot is dry, you have to turn it upside down on the wheel and trim it to make the foot. So this is the first two step of uh, making pottery. And if you need to make the lid, so lid make separately, but to the perfect size that it fit to the pot. So this is the image of uh, lid and the pot. So here uh, uh, is showing uh, one video of uh, how you throw small pieces. When you make uh, something small, it's good to make and take a big lump of clay and you keep on making and cutting. So here we are making uh, these uh, pourer, milk pot on a hump. So, and on the right, what you see, what it becomes when it's uh, fired and decorated. So 
it's uh, what we do we really enjoy like if we, even if, when we watch ourselves doing on a video yeah. we still admire like, <laughs> <laughs> so, can't get enough of poetry <laughs> yeah. so each of these processes we really enjoy we never feel like we are working i think that's the best kind of job anyone can do <laughs> So after these pots are made, they are, we leave them out so that they become fully dry. And once they are very dry, then they get uh, to the kiln. So it's a furnace. And we have an electric kiln in the studio. So the, pot go, the pots go through a first firing. There will be a total of two. First firing is called bisque. And uh, this is where the red clay, the terracotta clay, gets its beautiful orange color. So on the left of the photo, you can see fired pots after a bisque firing. And these are butter dishes. They are on the Etsy shop like, as a finished product. There's quite a few of them now. And uh, so then there's this process called glazing. Glazing is uh, when you apply a coating on the pot so that uh, it will make this glass. Um, so for example, if you see my uh, tumbler here, so this is the glass, the you know, glass part of the of the pot. The surface is the glaze. And so the bottom, and the bottom is like which is like if you leave it unglazed, so it will remain like the clay. So clay this color. part is the glaze, and this is unglazed. So you see the difference. So it's good to have glaze on each pot, especially if you are using them, because it's easy to clean, also make it stronger. So in this photo, you see the blue bucket. This is the contains the glaze, and the pots are uh, dipped or the glaze is poured. So this image is uh, showing like the process of glazing. So you can do in many many different ways. So this is one simpler way: is pouring and pour out and dipping. So people use different. Some are spray. So. So this picture, and this is our studio. So you see at the background, it's all green and you can walk up uh, in the mountain to see a beautiful view of village and uh, the snow clapped mountains in the front. That's quite a view. After the glaze is applied, uh, this is where the decoration part starts. So the, the surface as a glaze uh, at this stage, it's not uh, glassy at all. It's like a powder. So imagine a white powdery surface. So um, the decoration then is done using some pigments, ceramic pigments. So here on the photo, you can see the black lines. They are going to become blue after the firing because it's a mixture of um, water and a little bit of uh, uh, glaze and also some uh, uh, cobalt oxide. So this is what um, we put on the on the pots. Everything is, you know, safe for food. Everything is uh, really uh, safe once it's fired. This little video is showing the process of decorating. So it's done with the uh, brush with the, that has natural um, animal hair. It's uh, these brushes are made for calligraphy and with ink normally but they are excellent for this type of technique because they do carry a lot of the pigments with them. Um, so yeah, it's a process of concentration because you cannot make a mistake with this technique. If you make a mistake, you, you cannot uh, undo or anything. You'll have to really just wipe everything off and start again. So this is also why everything is unique. It's, uh, and on the right side, you can see these fired plates. So um, these chicken plates, for example, it's the same shape for the chicken, but every time there will be different patterns inside, different um, features for the tail and etc. We normally do not uh, like plan ahead or draw on a paper or something. Do you know like we are we are, we are going to do chicken. So we know, have a, like the first basic form ready. And then whatever, come, whatever comes in your mind is very spontaneous, uh, all this decoration. So that is why you will never see our poetry like same. Many people many times ask, could you please make this? But uh, we cannot, even we, if we want to, 
we can't replicate exactly the same. And this is the beauty we find uh, for our work. Each time is different. This picture is showing the uh, inside of the kiln, the electric furnace. Um, with on the left side, uh, the glazed uh, dish with the decorations before firing, and then when you open the kiln after firing on the right. So this is also, you see our electric kiln is a small electric kiln, which is very easy to handle. And, and it, this uh, kiln is so interesting because it can run on a single phase. It takes very small electricity, less than uh, air condition, what takes. So it's very convenient for us to use this kiln. If uh, you are not very familiar with the process of making ceramics, these firings are very long because they go to a high temperature of over 1000 degrees. So for that you need uh, many, many hours. So usually it's fired uh, during the night, full night. So it takes like 10 to 12 hours to fire and then 10 to 12 hours to cool down. So this video is showing like some of our uh, finished product. And from here, we are going to talk about uh, photography as well. So to start with like, yeah, just like when you came and when you asked the question of like how you keep the hours and see very fresh and uh, update. So we try to keep on like inventing or trying to find a new way of presenting our work. So that's where like photography or videography uh, works very well. So when these pieces came out, we thought like instead of taking this uh, uh, shot as a photo, we made a video of each pieces. Okay, okay so now we are uh, going to talk about how we take the photos of the product. So the, the, most of the time we like to take the photos outside in the natural light, but not in the direct light. So we have set up this uh, very uh, high-tech system in the garden. It's a large piece of canvas, the same canvas that you would uh, buy if you wanted to make a painting. And it's uh, very good because it's thick, so it doesn't um, make um, folds. It's flow very well. It flows, mm -hmm. and then also it's not shiny. So that's very good for taking a photo. And um, our, uh, we don't have any a specific uh, fancy camera to take the photos. We use the cameras from our mobile phones. So they are decent cameras, of course, but uh, it's also not inaccessible in terms of price range or anything. So here is the example of like you see, like we are this setup and the same picture you see on the right is taken from this same background. So we are going to show a few couple of more pictures of uh, taking from this same setup with the canvas and natural light. We try to avoid direct sunlight, it's not good uh, because it makes a strong shadow. And as well as because ceramic is a glass coating, it's, uh, you see like there's a sheen. So we try to avoid the direct uh, sunlight. And as Elodie mentioned, because the canvas is uh, soft and it absorbs light, so it always gives a very nice and soft uh, uh, image and not too bright. And so we don't uh, we don't edit the photographs afterwards very much at all. Sometimes we feel we have nothing to edit, or sometimes we'll edit if it's a little bit on the darker side, the background. So we will do a very light edit, but with always the idea of not changing the product. It should look the same when the customer receives the box, or it should look better than the photo, but. It's not the idea that the photo becomes this, um, the piece itself. It's the piece which should be the piece. And then we only do a crop. So sometime uh, like for, like when we are doing a show or pop up or something, so we have to make invitation card or a poster. So these kind of photo works very well, where we compose lots of pieces together and take image. You see on the left, uh, it's just simple. On a little board, I stuck a white paper and took picture and crop it. And this, uh, and then we do writing on it. 
So it's very easy way to like when you want to make interesting uh, invite or poster. And yeah, what you say? Yeah. So the other way we take the photos are using the natural uh, backgrounds around us. So all these photos were taken in, in the garden. We try to find a place where it's quite um, it makes a, a, a even background. So whether it's the flower or the pile of uh, wood there. And uh, it brings a really interesting other dimension. These photos we tend to use mostly for the social media because for the Etsy shop, we prefer to use the clear background. It's easier for usually for a customer to relate to the piece as a, with a neutral background so that your imagination can take it to your home rather than being too influenced by the background behind however beautiful the photo might look. And as you said, like, because uh, our nature around is so beautiful and sometimes, most of the time, it uh, kind of reflects in our work. So like this piece in the middle was made in the spring and the spring, the garden was full of uh, flowers. So it was a, made a perfect background to take those photos. But even uh, if, for example, people don't have access to a full garden to take the photos, there are certain things you can do even on a balcony or using, uh, if you, you know, you could use bricks, you could use different things which are more available in the city. Or sometimes some city walls nearby, they are very interesting because there's a nice distressed look about them. They are very artistic if you crop it. And uh, so there are other ways you can do yeah. without living in, in the countryside. Yeah, you said like uh, with these photos, you also want to say like, you always find some kind of a uh, nice background to take your photo. But to make sure like your focus is on your piece rather than the background. So your uh, piece and product should be in the foreground and very clear. It should not like match with the backdrop. So this is when we were talking about the monsoon. This is, uh, these photos were taken very recently. Um, the nature at the moment is uh, so lush. So this, it was interesting to the pieces uh, for example, with the clouds, they are the monsoon collection. So here they are taken in their monsoon environment. And there's something very interesting about that. But it's a, yeah, a simple shot, actually. And also the other reason, because with the, this, the light is not very good these days. And to use the backdrop, the canvas, if we try, it doesn't give a very good photo. So there's other way, like if you have no lights or not, something is not working for you as a backdrop, then you can find some natural background or something which is around which is around you to take photos. Yeah, this photo is showing uh, the same product shot in the two different environments. One is the, uh, the clear background and the other one the garden. And the photo on the left with the clear background, it was taken not outside with the canvas, because uh, Reyes was saying in this monsoon, the light uh, for the canvas was not working. It was giving um, too much blue shade about it. It was not working. So we did a small investment. We bought uh, what is called a photo a light box for photography. So it's a kind of a box that you can put on a table. And inside it's got two strips of uh, lights at the top. You can adjust the intensity of the light. And the background inside is uh, like reflective, so it gives very good product photography. And so the picture on the left is taken like that. And um, we also like that because it's uh, very close to what we were doing with the canvas outside. So in terms of the look of the product, is nothing has changed, just practicality for us. So here is the, these two photos are taken on with the same white background, but in different lights. The one on the left is natural light outside in the garden with the canvas background. And what you see on the right is uh, taken in the light box. So you'll see a tiny differences, but uh, it's not uh, too much. With both has their own speciality. And uh, so when we make an entry on uh, Etsy, we make sure that we are showing the product uh, with different angles, um, with the outside, open, like for example, here is a box, so closed, open, a little bit of inside. 
and uh, we always include uh, always a shot with the hand so that you can get a sense of the scale without having to take out your ruler to figure out the dimension of the product. Although we do include that as well in the description, it's always good to have the hand because you, you are going to get a, a sense of the product straight away. Yeah, it's very, very important for us to take the photo from different angle to give a, just the right picture to customer who want to buy this piece. And this, as Elodie mentioned, the hand gives also like right uh, scale of the piece. And we try to kind of take each, like most of the details, even like it, because it's handmade, sometimes it's a tiny kind of changes of what you don't want, but it's happened and it's beauty, we find. And we also try to show that as well because not people get uh, disappointed if they see something, oh, this is a little bit a uh, hole, pinholes here. So it should be, that's in the beginning, Elodie mentioned it should be, when you receive the pieces, it should be more like surprising, good ex uh, surprise rather than disappointment. So as like perfect picture you can give to customer when they are buying online. And we've, we've received very good feedback, you know, about how the piece looks even better in real than on the photo. So it's really, uh, really good. And also equally, people are very attracted to the pieces through the photography. So it's, I think we've achieved the right balance. Yeah. And also it's very important, like how you are describing your uh, pieces, your product. Like if you see in the bottom, what we have written is like to the point, not trying to also write too much but perfect like people get a very nice uh, like perfect picture of uh, what it is and the dimension the size everything so that is it this is where we are and this is our shop on Etsy and this is uh, go and give a like to our studio at the Jalal Mitty thank you so much Thank you so much, you guys. I think it was a well-rounded presentation. I I think everybody in the chat box are actually just complimenting how beautiful all your designs are, how inspiring your story is. Pooja, Ketke, uh, Asha, Parikshit, all of these, like a lot of people are in the chat box are just putting how amazing your products and your studio is. So I have a big fan base <laughs> like here <laughs> in the session. So thank you so much. I think every new sort of explained about the photography and the making of the products so well. And I think uh, thank you so much for such a well-rounded presentation. Um, with that, we will be starting uh, questions. Uh, we'll be taking up questions from the audience now. So um, I think Ishani, uh, yeah, Ishani is here. So she'll be taking up the audience questions from the chat box. Over to you. Thanks, Radhika. Uh, thank you so much for that presentation. I think just for a few minutes, we were transported out of our homes and in a beautiful uh, place in Himachal. So thank you so much for that uh, visual treat. Uh, we have tons of questions. We got quite a few questions in the chat box and we also uh, take questions from our audience in advance as well. So. I'll just start with the questions now because I think, yeah, we have about 15 minutes. Uh, so the first question was actually about the glaze. Uh, Prachi and Kaveri um, uh, both asked, have a question around the glaze. So I'm just going to combine that. Kaveri was asking, do you prepare your own glaze? Uh, what is the white and blue glaze that you're using? Um, and uh, Prachi is asking that, is the painting done only on the cobalt uh, oxide or mixed with some clay? So the, I, I'm just going to start with the technical questions mm -hmm. from the audience. So like, uh, as we mentioned, we both have our own practice, art practice. So we also spend a lot of time doing our artwork. So when we started Atelier Lalmeti, this table way, we tried to keep it very simple. If you see our forms and glazes and decoration, we try to keep it very simple. So we decided on to buy a ready-made glaze and we make a tiny bit twist to make our, our own but these glazes are there are many suppliers available in India who supply ready-made glaze so it's very easy because many times people make the life very complicated by testing it's very like if you have interest you can go on and on and try new glazes but we if you see like all our pieces are like white glaze so we try to just keep it very simple and the second part of your question 
Who is about the decoration uh, and the cobalt? Hmm. It's a very simple mix with the, the pigment and uh, some water and a tiny bit of uh, glaze. That's it. Okay. Uh, Nadini is asking, do you also teach or take workshops or keep uh, apprentices at the atelier? Our setup is such like uh, doesn't allow to have an uh, apprentice, but we do take advanced pottery course in summer. This year, unfortunately, we could not do it because pandemic. But in May and June, we take uh, advanced pottery courses. And advanced means like we want people who have tiny bit of experience, like even just can throw a simple cylinder. Because if you're coming just for two months, it's not a lot of time. So we don't want to focus on teaching the basic skill, but really we want to take it further from there. Once you have a basic skill, how you can use that skill to make something interesting. So what we do is we, uh, if somebody is interested, they can follow us because we update about the different uh, teachings that we do. So whenever we do the next program and we cannot tell for sure when, it will be advertised on our Instagram. Perfect, thank you. Um, Anuja is asking, how do you deal with, or what are your tips for shipping delicate pieces? We have shown in the slide the one box we are packing. So <clears throat> we, like, first, to, first of all, you have to have a nice, uh, strong box. And when you are packing, there are many different material one can use to pack. In the city, unfortunately, you have to buy uh, bubble wrap to do but uh, the best is like once you wrap you do not you should not feel your product inside like once you throw it on your like floor it should not break so that is the piece like you have to pack it really well and put some nice uh, packing on the side when you it's going into the box the piece has to be cushioned all around so that if it would take a bash in the transportation it would not reach the piece Great. Um, Sharanya is asking, what are your tips for um, engaging with clients and other Etsy shop owners and some tips for someone who's just starting out on Etsy, how to make their business successful on Etsy? I think this idea of what we are talking today is good photography. That's uh, probably tip number one. Uh, and um, clear description, I would say. Also, um, I uh, find that on Etsy, uh, all the the shop setting is made very easy for the sellers because there's lots and lots of options one can use. And um, it's very interesting to go and look at all the options. Like for example, you can add videos, you can add in, in your description for your shop, but also in your product. And so making the most of Etsy features, uh, there's a provision for FAQ, there are um, lots of different options that one can investigate and I would recommend taking the time to really click on everything. Yes. Thank you. And for interacting with the customers, um, I don't know exactly what it means in terms of uh, communication. I like, uh, first of all, like when you are presenting anything on the Etsy shop, it should be true to itself. Like it should not be something which is making look good or faking look good, but when people receive something and if they surprise, like nicely surprised and order again, that's the kind of uh, reward. So you always look for something like when people are really happy to aim for that. Yeah, I must say, I think the photography that you guys also showed in the, in the presentation, and even if anyone was to check out your Etsy shop or Instagram account, the photography is beautiful, simple with the product and focus. And I also really love the touch of, I think there was the maker of the product actually behind in the background of the picture that you took, which mm -hmm. was a really good uh, touch. I think there's a lot that our audience can learn from your photography. So I think photography is definitely one big takeaway. Um, I have a lot of questions around your raw materials. So a lot of people are asking if your clay is, um, is sourced from Himachal or where do you find clay from? What is the brand? What are the techniques? So can you tell people a little, little bit about the raw material? So you saw like we use uh, terracotta clay, which is available everywhere in the country. 
very easily. All the local potters, what they use clay is terracotta clay. So we use the same clay. And uh, just behind uh, our studio and from the mountain, we dig uh, some clay. But this clay exactly where, because you cannot dig also anywhere. So the place where we could dig is the clay has some sand. So we have to clean it very well. And we get some clay from Delhi where I used to take when I was in Delhi. So I'm used to that clay. So I still like that clay. So I bring that clay and we mix uh, half and half. So that's what at the moment we are doing, but we are exploring around area and we are going bringing clay and testing. So once we find like good clay around, so this is what our aim in another few months, we, this is what we like to do, like everything all like hundred percent to be from here locally, not even Himachal Park, just around in this locality. Okay. Um, I have a few questions for uh, Preeti. Uh, Preeti, if you're here, I will just direct a few questions to you. Um, we have a question from Shalini who is asking us about the listing fees and other fees on the Etsy platform. So if you can run our audience through the pricing structure. Yeah, uh, sure. Thank you for the question, uh, Shani. So yes, uh, when we are talking about the, uh, you know, the pricing when we are doing for our particular product. So we need to include the pricing for the, that particular, uh, particular product and the labor charge. And apart from that, yes, we should always include our, you know, uh, uh, our PayPal commission. So we need to uh, calculate all these things and then only we need to have our final, you know, pricing product for us. Uh, meanwhile, if uh, I'll talk about if you are giving a uh, free shipping, you that I really, we really don't want you to get into the loss thing. So yes, we will always suggest you to put the shipping charges too in, in the product. But if yes, if you're not providing the free shipping, then it's of course the buyers are going to have it. But then yes, these things you need to keep in mind while we are, you are, uh, you know, finalizing your product. So you should include all uh, yeah, and, and of course your, uh, uh, you know, of course your interest or whatever profit you are going to make. Of course, that is the thing. That's it. Yeah. Uh, Preeti, you also tell them about the charges that are, the, what is the charge structure for Etsy? Oh, uh, sorry? What are the uh, uh, costs that Etsy, that they will basically have to yeah, pay sure. for the fees to Etsy? Yeah, Etsy uh, does... Yeah, 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 sure. So Etsy does take 5% commission and uh, as well, uh, PayPal does take 4.8 to 8% commission. That 5% commission for Etsy and 5% commission for PayPal, we should always have that much in our hand and while we are pricing the product. And apart from that shipping, your shipping partner can way that what should be the shipping charges for different, different, uh, you know, area or different, different country. So yeah, we need to be focusing on that and of course your product uh, you know better uh, than us so yeah the charge for your product too and the labor yeah. thanks Preeti uh, I also have a slightly generic question uh, in terms of how to grow your business on uh, Etsy but I think maybe if you can uh, let the audience know a few tips about how to increase or how to improve discovery on the Etsy platform yeah, so uh, for example, I will, I always suggest my sellers that Etsy is all about beautifying your shop. The more you will beautify your shop, the more attractive, because it's all about people are, uh, people sitting back uh, somewhere else, like in, I'm sitting back in India and people are sitting back in Australia. They're just looking at your product and feeling, uh, feeling like, you know, buying your product. So they should have that trust and they should have that, uh, you know, your product is uh, that catchy that they should have uh, that look and, you know, they find that, no, I want this particular product in my home. So we need to be very careful as, uh, uh, as Riaz already mentioned, we need to be very particular and we need to be very careful while it comes to photography. So yeah, I would first of all suggest that we should always focus on photography. We should always put our, uh, you know, uh, apart from that, I would also suggest that we should always have our 
focus on our tags, our titles, and our attributes because these are uh, work as a SEO for our Etsy shop, right? So we should always think that this is our shop, and we should always think that uh, the, uh, we should always keep our uh, keep in our mind as a physical shop. What we can do more, you know, to increase our sale for a physical shop. So whatever things we need, we need to, you know, uh, we need to apply for a physical shop. Uh, feel free and do a lot of things for the uh, for the same thing like title tags and you know two word tags works better than one word tag so yeah uh, do that put all your time this will surely increase the sale and views and admirers yeah okay thanks Preeti uh, so Riaz and Ellie I think we just have time for one last question and this is usually also our favorite question so I'm going to end with this which is that on Etsy I think the reach is um, primarily international for our sellers in India. So how has, what do you have like one of your favorite memories of selling to a customer abroad and what location were they from? The Italy, the one we sent to Italy. Yes, recently we sent a box to Italy. And... Uh, yeah, we are there. Yeah, oh, yeah. So I think uh, what's really nice is when they send photos back of the products, right? Is so some products went to Hong Kong, some products went to New York, and to see our work in this New York setting and all, it was really exciting. Yeah, and I'm sure your products are the ones that make the location even more beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Some people also don't want to use the products for what it was designed for. So butter dishes have become jewelry boxes and things like that. <laughs> yeah, I can absolutely imagine. I can see myself <laughs> doing that as well. I, I mean, the products are so beautiful. I, I can't imagine putting water on them, even though I know absolutely they're meant for that. Uh, I, if I would use it, I think I would use it as like a jewelry box, keep it right on my <laughs> so that I can see it or not. Thank but you so much. We, we love people to use it yeah. and enjoy it like every day and all the time. And if it breaks, it's no problem. You can order yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Thank That's. I think those were all the audience questions. Uh, I will um, hand it over to you, Radhika, to close the session. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, audience, for being part of this session with us. I, I hope you enjoyed the small talk with the Etsy Collective Creator Speak session with Riaz and Elodie. I think you guys are wonderful and a lot of valuable tips to our audience. So I'm sure they have noted down all the details. And thank you so much for spending a Saturday with us um, and almost giving us a pictorial uh, studio tour plus a very enriching uh, ceramics workshop as well. So thank you so much. Thank you Preeti thank you. for answering a lot of questions uh, related to um, Etsy and opening an Etsy shop. So if you haven't already signed up for the next week's session, um, do check out the next Saturday session which is with Ninoshka who runs an Etsy shop by the name Ninoshka India. She will be giving a lot of design lessons on zero waste fashion and she runs an award, national award winning um, brand so make sure you tune in for that as well in case you haven't uh, followed our Insta uh, social media handles do check out all of those thank you so much guys and thank you so much Riaz and Elodie once again for thank you so much for having us and uh, thank you for all the people who have joined us and in shown interest in our work and you're always welcome to if you have any question or if you want to ask something you can direct message on Instagram then ask and we'll try to answer your question. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was really fun having you over for the 100th Etsy Collective. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.